second half was just not even close to good enough in, uh, execution and um, I wish there was one thing I could say if we clean this up you know it would be different but it was it was a million things it was uh, myself you know everyone would, would have had a hand in it and, and uh, has to be a lot better Keep it open or close it out. Our version here at the happy hour bar of start sit. That was Jared Goff. You heard talking about his bad second half in week 14. So that's where we start. Matthew Jared Goff against the Broncos comes in as QB. What for you? QB 19. So I'm closing it out uh, on Jared Goff. Look under 240 pass. If there's a positive here, the game's at home in in the dome, uh, uh, you know, so there that's a positive, but uh, this isn't a great matchup. Since week five, the Broncos have allowed one or fewer passing touchdowns in eight of nine games. Over that stretch, they allow the third fewest fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks, just 12.6. And Goff has had under 240 passing yards in three of the past four games. He just doesn't seem to be on the same page with Amon Ra St. Brown. The offensive line's a little bit banged up as well. I think they're going to try to run the ball against Denver. Uh, in this one as well. Denver's 17th against the run over the last month, so I could see a lot of Gibbs and Montgomery in game script because I don't think the Broncos come in and blow them out, but it also means that I just don't think Goff has to throw a ton crazily, so right. I'm closing it out on, on, uh, on Jared Goff. Yeah, I got him at QB18. I'm going to close it out as well. Denver, you know, kept C.J. Stroud and Josh Allen to uh, QB15 when they faced them. The past four weeks, he's been quarterback 21 on a points per game base, basis. That's behind Tommy DeVito, behind Gardner Minshew, behind Desmond Ritter. Uh, maybe Goff should have been in our draft earlier. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. Shots Come fired. On. No. Shots I'm fired. So it's not well, that. He's an MVP he's, candidate at one point. Yeah, he's exactly. Long Come on. He's my other starting quarterback with Trubisky, <laughs> so I feel really good right now going into the playoffs. All right, the next one here, Jay, DeAndre Swift against the Seahawks. He comes in as RB20 for Barry. It's not been a good couple weeks here on the ground for Swift in the Seagulls offense. No, sir, it has not. But they go up against the Seahawks rushing defense, which is the third worst in the league by efficiency. Here's the other thing that I think is a little bit underrated about the Eagles. They finally got some rest. They get an extra day's break. They've had this brutal schedule. These past five games have been against the best teams in football at a rest disadvantage constantly. I think they will look fresher, and I think DeAndre Swift will finally have some room to run, so I'm keeping it open. Especially against Seattle. Over the last four weeks, they allow the eighth most fantasy points to opposing running backs. They've given up uh, 135 rushing yards to running backs in three straight games. And let's be clear, this Eagles offense has struggled a little bit, so I think they're going to want to get back to bases, especially on the road at Seattle. So I think Swift, who should get a heavy workload, when he's seen at least 15 touches this season, he's averaging over 15 fantasy points per game. He's my running back 20. I am keeping it open on DeAndre Swift. All right. Next up, Jalen Warren against the Colts here. Lawrence, Jalen Warren, three straight games with single-digit fantasy points. Can you continue to start him? This one was close to me. I like the matchup here as Indy allows the four, fourth most points to running backs. Um, I actually like Najee Harris uh, oh. th this week. Wow. Yeah, I do like Najee okay. Harris this week. He's got, the six, he's got the sixth highest percentage rate for rushing attempts inside the 10. But for Jalen Warren, he's only been averaging seven fantasy points the last three weeks, which is RB42. I got him at running back 34 this week. Um, it's close, but I'm going to close it out. I'm actually going to keep Jalen Warren uh, open. Uh, look, against New England, he got 52% of the team snaps. He's now had double-digit target share in back-to-back -back games. Trubisky's not scared to dump it off. And you think about this Colts defense. Last week against the Bengals, 126 receiving yards to opposing running backs. We saw Chase Brown have that big, long touchdown reception uh, and then run after the catch. We saw Joe Mixon involved in the passing game against them as well last week. I think that's an area to attack the Colts. So give me Jalen Warren. I'm at running back 31. So again, fairly low, but to the extent you've been using Jalen Warren this year, I'm keeping it open. I think better days are ahead for him this week. I think he's a He's a viable flex this week. Yep. It hurts me that you've got him one spot ranked ahead of Najee Harris, who that my team purposeful. is built around for the playoffs. Yeah. But I agree. I think this is a borderline one. I will say with the Colts, they played back a lot against Cincinnati because they were so worried about Chase getting deep against their uh, untested corner. So I think that they will adjust somewhat. Grover Stewart is back for them. He is basically their entire run defense. But you don't feel amazing about Jalen Warren, but you can do worse. Yeah, but by the way, even though... 
I'm not saying they're Jamar Chase, but Deontay Johnson and George Pickens, if they're worried about speed, those two guys can fly, and Trubisky will sling it. So, I mean, they may have to still continue to play back a little bit because of uh, the, the big playability of those two guys. Our next one here, Matthew, Keaton Mitchell against Jacksonville. Yeah. Mitchell's looked good when he gets the ball. The problem is he does not get a ton of touches in this offense. 11 or fewer touches in every single game this season. The Keaton Mitchell breakout that we thought was going to happen last week didn't. They we thought, hey, they're going to come out of the bye, and he's over taken Gus Edwards and he sort of has but um right. but like that's more of a you know knock on Gus Edwards than it is whoa Keaton Mitchell exploded single digit fantasy points in two of the past three games it's not a great matchup against the Jacksonville uh, Jaguars who allow the third fewest rushing yards per game to running backs Keaton Mitchell hasn't gotten involved in the passing game the way we thought he might have uh recently so that's still potential but he's had just one game this year with multiple receptions like right. for the most part He's just basically getting one reception. It's, they're using him as a run, as a runner. No team in the NFL has a lower running back target share this year than the Ravens. They don't throw to the running back as a big part of their offense. And the other issue is, by the way, is we're coming off a game where Lamar Jackson had almost 400 total yards, his best game this entire season. So it's not like it's not like the Ravens are going like, oh, we got to figure out a way to get Keaton Mitch involved because our offense isn't working. Their offense is rolling. Yeah. It's looking great. It's just not. With him. Yeah. I mean, you have OBJ and Zay Flowers and Isaiah Likely and Lamar. Like, I just I just don't see Keaton Mitchell having a huge game. I'm at running back 36. I'm closing it out. I got him at 30, running back 32. I'm going to close it out as well. I would feel better if they did use the running backs in the passing game more because Jacksonville is actually allowed a league high 91 receptions to running backs. So that would be good for guys like Austin Eckler or – you know, Joe Mixon or somebody else, but he's only got two targets in each of the last two games, so closing it out on Keith Mitchell. Jay, Amari Cooper hasn't scored 15-plus points since Week 10 right now. They have the Bears defense that we constantly talk about. They've been resurgent. Can you continue to roll with Cooper and the Joe Flacco show? You can. You absolutely can, and the reason why, and I mentioned it before, Joe Flacco, he hoofs it. He's a hoofer. He's a hoofman, if you will. And Amari yeah. Cooper saw six deep targets last week, and so I think that Flacco will connect more often with Cooper going forward, so I'm keeping it open on Amari Cooper. Matthew, you agree? Uh, I do in gre- uh, indeed agree. I'm at wide receiver uh, 29, so I'm as a top 30 play. Uh, look, week 14, he had a 32% target share, right? That's his highest since week eight. Six deep targets last week as well. Flacco's not scared to sort of, you know, uh, you know, air it out a little bit here. And to your point, the, Bear- the strength of the Bears defense is that run defense, so they are going to have to throw. Cooper's just too talented, getting too much uh, of the targets here. He's got a competent professional quarterback in Joe Flacco. Yeah, I, I'm going to keep it open. Again, wide receiver three, let's not get crazy, but I'm keeping it open on Amari Cooper. Going further down the list here, Lawrence, Hollywood Brown, just seven fantasy points in four of his pa- – under seven fantasy points in four of his past five. He's got the 49ers this week. Where does Hollywood come in for your rankings? Yeah, well, he battled uh, that heel injury his last game out versus the Steelers, had to come out there, so he didn't register any numbers there. But the game prior to that against the Rams, they were – getting blown out and he saw his highest amount of targets with Matthew uh, I'm sorry with Kyler Murray since he's been back and he was able to get six for 88 against them getting blown out we expect the 49ers to blow them out Um, and Tyler Lockett last week was able to be a guy who was able to get six for 88 DK Metcalf got in the end zone before he got ejected out of the game so I'm just kind of banking on You know, banging on the fact that Kyler going to have to throw the ball much like he had to do uh, against the Rams. Since week 10, since week 10, Marquise Hollywood Brown on a points per game basis is wide receiver 80. That's what we're talking about here. Wide receiver 80. Since Kyler Murray came (laughs) back, he is averaging under six fantasy points per game. You know, you're signing up for five and a half fantasy points. He's had under 30 receiving yards and three of four games that Kyler has started this year as well. I get it. It's a decent matchup. He had a nice game against the Niners earlier in the season, but it's the fantasy playoffs, and I want to be safe unless I need to swing for the fences because of a specific matchup reason. For the most part, just these question mark guys, like find me somebody that I feel like I can count 
more in the production. I don't think that's the case with Hollywood Brown. I'm closing it out on him. He's my wide receiver 37 this week. Our last one, Jay, Terry McLaurin against the Rams. I mean, listen, you want to talk about guys that have not had, uh, that have had a tough go, but single digit fantasy points in four straight games. It feels crazy to say that about Terry McLaurin, but that's the reality of where we are. Can you continue to start him, especially with playoff implications yeah. here? Can you? No, I don't think you can, Matthew, Connor, Lawrence. I don't think you can. Uh, I think you have to close it out on Terry McLaurin, despite the fact that it is a pretty favorable matchup. Rams pass defense doesn't scare you, but it's been single digit points for the past four weeks for Terry McLaurin. Now, maybe coming out of the bye, there's a reorientation of their offense to uh, their best player on offense, but I don't think you can necessarily bank on that. Can I tell you something sad? Yes, please. I agree with you. Oh, boy. I agree with you. I love Terry McLaurin. You guys know that. He's one of my favorite players in the NFL. I'm a diehard Commanders fan. Somewhere behind me, if you look all the way back there, yeah, see all the way back there, there's number 17 right there. <laughs> the throwback we, one, we too. Got him, we got his jersey on the wall here. Um, we may have to prune a couple of these, <laughs> by the way, as I sort of look through. Uh, not everyone's still a, su a fantasy superstar, but a lot of wow. them are. But anyway, so we got number 17 up there. I love him, uh, but he's on pace for under 1,000 receiving yards this year. He's had below a 20% target share in four of the past five. On 90 targets, so, okay, in his last 11 games, Terry McLaurin has 90 targets. He's got one touchdown and 90 targets. And you know I love me some future Hall of Famer Sam Howell, and I agree with you. Coming out of the bye, hopefully – and, and remember the last game we saw McLaurin, zero receptions and zero yards. Like, mm. which is, this is a guy that's mm. one of their highest paid players on the yeah. team. Like, that can't happen. So I'm sure that they're over the bye week, Eric Bannigby was looking at how do we get the ball in McLaurin's hands. So I, I buy all that narrative. And I actually think he'll have a good game. All that said, it is the fantasy playoffs. There are too many negative trends here on an offense where uh, they've spread the ball around passing wise. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if it's a enemy thing, whether it's a Sam Howell thing. McLaurin's obviously going to get a decent amount of defensive attention. So I sadly have him at wide receiver 32. You see it there on your screen. I'm going to close it out. To recap, Barry's keep it open, close it out rankings here. Jared Goff is a close at QB 19. DeAndre Swift is an open at RB 20. Jalen Warren also open against the Colts, RB31. Keaton Mitchell close it out against Jacksonville, RB36. Amari Cooper against the Bears stays open at wide receiver 29. Two wide receivers that are close. Hollywood Brown at wide receiver 37 against the 49ers. And Terry McLaurin against the Rams, reluctantly, at wide receiver 32. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.